Cat collars. Does my cat need one? What kind is best? What information should be on their ID tag? Whether your cat is indoor only, explores outside on a harness and leash, or is allowed to roam freely outdoors, keep watching because I'm gonna answer all of your cat collar questions. Hi, I'm Emily, cat trainer and cat adventure enthusiast. My goal is to educate, support, and encourage you to get out there, go new places, and do new things with your cat. Let's learn, grow, and explore together. Hello, and welcome back to Kitty Cat Go. Last time, we talked about whether or not you can use a collar to walk your cat instead of a harness. Check out this video to find out the answer. But today, we're going to dive even deeper into the world of cat collars. It's a common debate in the pet world. Should cats wear collars? What should be included on their collar? And what kind is best? By the end of this video, you'll be able to make an informed decision for you and your kitty. But first, a common misconception. Collars are not just for outdoor cats. So let's first talk about the reasons and situations in which a cat should wear a collar. Collars are a crucial tool for identification, helping to ensure your cat will be more easily reunited with you if they get lost. For outdoor cats, they signal to others that your cat is not astray and they do indeed belong to someone. For indoor cats who accidentally slip outside, a collar with proper ID tags will increase the chances of your cat being returned to you. Some might argue that if your cat is already microchipped that they don't need to wear a collar, but I would disagree. While I'm definitely a proponent of microchipping your cat, the downside to microchip is that it would require someone to catch your cat and then take them to a vet's office or animal shelter that has a chip reader to get it scanned. And the unfortunate truth is that most people won't take that step. However, if your cat has a collar, someone can easily check the tags and then get in touch with you to let you know that they found your cat. A microchip is a great additional layer of protection should your cat get lost and then slip out of their collar. So this isn't really an either or situation, it's more of a both situation. Your cat should be microchipped, and if they're at risk of getting outdoors, they should wear a collar. Okay, but do all cats need to wear collars? No, I don't think it's necessary for all cats to wear a collar at all times. However, I would suggest that cats in the following situations wear one. Cats who are allowed to freely wander outside, as mentioned, a collar will signal to others that your cat is not astray and they do indeed belong to someone. Indoor cats who are prone to door dashing because they are always at risk of getting outside. Cats who go outside for leashed walks and adventures because there is always a risk they might slip out of their harness. Cats who are experiencing a change in their environment, such as moving, traveling, going to the vet, or being cared for by a pet sitter because the chances are higher during these times that they might get loose outside. Now, if your cat is indoor only, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't put a collar on them. You can absolutely put a collar on your cat if you want to. These situations are just the ones in which it's more strongly recommended for your cat to wear a collar. So what should you include on a cat's collar? I'm glad you asked. For identification collars, you absolutely need to include up-to-date ID tags. Your phone number will be the most vital piece of information included on these tags because it's the quickest way for someone to contact you if they find your lost cat. You can also add your cat's name, but remember your phone number is the primary focus. For indoor cats, consider adding a special note that says, I'm lost or indoor cat. Anything that will let someone know that your cat is indeed lost. Because free roaming outdoor cats are fairly common, it would be easy for someone just to assume your cat is an outdoor cat. But if they happen to check the collar and see your special note, they'll immediately know your cat is lost and will hopefully reach out to you. Optional items to add your cat's collar include their rabies tag and a microchip tag. Now let's talk about the four main types of cat collars. There's the basic, the breakaway, the buckle, and the elastic. These classifications are based on the type of clasp used and they each have their own set of pros and cons. Basic cat collars. Basic cat collars come in various colors and materials, but they usually have a regular side release buckle with no breakaway feature. Pros, they don't easily get lost. Cons, they can be a choking hazard and pose injury risks if snagged on something. Breakaway cat collars. Breakaway collars feature a plastic clasp that opens under sufficient pressure. This is a popular safety choice because it helps prevent choking and injuries if the collar gets snagged. Pros, it helps prevent injuries. Cons, 
Some breakaway clasps are too sensitive, so they pop open easily. Your cat might lose their collar and ID tags if that happens. Buckle cat collars. Buckle collars have a prong style buckle with adjustability holes, functioning like a human belt buckle. However, they lack the breakaway feature, which makes them less suitable for cats. Pros, they don't get easily lost. Cons, they can be a choking hazard and cause injuries if snagged on something. Supervision is key if your cat wears one of these. Elastic cat collars. Elastic collars are designed with stretchy material or elastic components. In theory, they aim to allow cats to slip out if caught, similar to breakaway collars. However, in reality, these collars are not safe. In a study done on cat collar safety, elastic cat collars were found to be the second highest cause of collar-related injuries, second to flea collars that didn't have a breakaway function. Due to the nature of elastic, these types of collars are more likely to stretch out with repeated use, which in turn makes them looser and more likely to get snagged on other objects. Pros? Well, I can't really think of any. Cons? They're more likely to get caught on other objects or even your cat's mouth or paws. Choosing the right collar for your cat is essential for their safety and well-being. While basic breakaway and buckle collars all have their own pros and cons, elastic collars should generally be avoided because of their potential risks. Make sure to select a collar that suits your cat's lifestyle and always prioritize their safety. I personally always opt for a breakaway cat collar. In fact, I make and sell breakaway cat collars that are made of biothane, which is a material that's waterproof, odorproof, and lightweight yet durable. And it comes in all kinds of colors. They are fixed length collars made custom to perfectly fit your cat so you don't have to worry about adjustable sliders that add bulk or make the collar uncomfortable for your kitty. Check the video description down below for a link to shop what I've deemed the Kylo collar, named after my best adventure buddy, Kylo Ren. Anyway, as mentioned, your cat's safety should always be your top priority when choosing a collar. The truth is, no collar is 100% without risk. It's not totally uncommon for cats to get their collars snagged on other objects, to get a leg or paw caught, or even to get their jaw stuck, which can lead to injury or strangulation. To lessen the chances of injury or discomfort for your cat, it's important to first ensure a proper fit. A collar that is too tight or too loose is more likely to cause issues. You should be able to fit one finger between your cat's neck and the collar. It's important to keep a close eye on your cat, especially when they're first getting used to wearing their collar. If you didn't properly collar train them first, they may scratch at it or try to get it off at the beginning. This behavior may last a week or two before they get used to wearing their collar. If your cat is frequently scratching at their collar, you should check on it on a regular basis, like at least once a day, to make sure that it remains fitted properly. Once your cat is comfortable wearing their collar, you should still check on it a couple times a week to make sure it continues functioning properly, fits right, and that it isn't getting frayed or damaged. The bottom line is, collars are not a set it and forget it kind of thing. If you're in the market for a new cat collar, be sure to check the video description for a link to my online store where you can find my handcrafted Kylo collars. You can also find a link to a video on how to collar train your cat made by Julie Poslins from Cat School. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more cat adventure content. Otherwise, stay curious, stay informed, and embark on those unforgettable journeys together. Until next time, happy adventuring!